Hey everyone, welcome to the Grace and Truth broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff and I'm sharing on the subject of faith, Bible faith, and how faith works in our lives. And we've actually come to the point in the teaching where we're looking at the third cooperative power that works with our faith. Bible faith does not stand alone. When you operate in God's kind of faith, there's these cooperative powers that are inner interlinked together and they work together with our faith. So let me do a quick review. We've seen that faith works in hope. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So Bible hope works with our faith. Faith actually works in hope. Your, your dreams, your visions, your desires, those all make up hope. And we've looked at that. The second cooperative power that works with our faith is God's love. God's love. And that's Galatians 5, 6, where the scriptures talk about in Christ that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything, but faith that works by love. So Bible faith, and when you're operating in the God kind of faith, it operates in love. It, excuse me, it operates in hope and it operates by God's love. Well, the third cooperative power that I wanna spend some time on now is patience, is patience. And that's found in Hebrews chapter six, verse 12, and it talks about how we need to be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. It takes patience in order to inherit the promises of God. Faith and patience works together. So. Our, our faith works in our hope, our faith works by God's kind of love, and our faith works with patience. So let's look at that in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm going to start in verse 10 for the context. The writer here says, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Man, it's comforting to know that God sees our, our labor of love. He sees our work of faith. He sees the seeds that we sow. And as a gardener over a garden, God is overseeing. Jesus is literally overseeing the seeds of our, of our hearts the seeds that we sow, the actions of our life, God oversees that and he's faithful to, to bless in the midst of labors of love, not just labor, but when we're laboring out of love for God and love for people, there's rewards in that. Not just works like legalism, but works of faith, faith that has action, God oversees that and blesses it. He says in verse 11, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Man, that is profound, brothers and sisters. And we need to understand that it's not just faith alone that we inherit the promises of God, but that faith with patience, that it takes patience in order to see the manifestation of the things we're believing God for. It takes patience. Endurance is what that word patience means, perseverance. Because when you believe God for something, when you step out in faith, there are things that war against our faith. There are things in the natural that come against us that Satan uses to discourage us, to get us to give up on believing God, to give up on our faith. Amen. That is important. And you and I need to understand the role that patience plays in our walk with the Lord, in our walk of faith. We know that the just shall live by faith. We know that we walk by faith and not by sight. But many people do not develop in their endurance. They do not develop in their perseverance in fighting the good fight of faith. Paul told a young pastor, Timothy, that we need to fight the good fight, and he called it a good fight of faith. Many times when you believe God for 
something or you're standing on God's word, his promises by faith, there's an assault that takes place against your, against your faith. And you need to learn how to endure. You need to learn how to run your race. This book of Hebrews chapter 12 goes on to say that we need to learn how to run our race and in that running, we have to keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Once we step out and we start to believe God for anything, whether it's finances, our health, our ministries, our homes, our children, then there's a great fight of afflictions that you have to endure in order to see that prayer or that, that stand that you're making come to pass in your life. And so many believers never develop in endurance. They never develop in, in how to stand and fight this good fight of faith, how to stand and endure things that come against you in this life and especially now your faith. And so that's what I want to look at is how patience is developed, how to fight a better fight of faith, how to stand one of the things that the Lord spoke to me a few years ago in regards to our country is that I needed to make a stand and that after doing all to stand, Ephesians chapter 6 says there's this warfare going on, there's this battle that is raging literally between heaven and hell and we're kind of caught in the middle and we have to learn to stand. And after we've done all to stand, Paul says in Ephesians 6 there, keep on standing. After you've done all to stand, stand and make sure that you're clothed in the armor of God. Well, one of the pieces of armor that Paul covers in how we stand after doing all to stand, keep standing, is the shield of faith. We have to understand the shield of faith. It is one of your weapons of warfare. And notice that it is a weapon and that we're in a warfare there is a battle raging, brothers and sisters, between good and evil. There's a battle raging in the culture, in the church, in our lives, between truth and, and falsehoods and lies and deception. It's a real battle. It's a, it's a warfare. There's a battle that is raging between God's kind of righteousness and political correctness a form of godliness that this world has that is absolutely an abomination to the Lord. And it's unrighteous. It's evil. And you have to learn how to stand. And you have to stand in faith. And Paul was talking about how that truth would be a girdle that you would have to put on. Righteousness would be like a breastplate. And then he goes on to talk about this shield of faith that will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. There are fiery darts headed your way, and you have to learn how to overcome them, how to endure them with this shield of faith. So let's look at, at the book of James and what James had to say about these trials and these, and these tribulations uh, and how we have to, to, to stand. In James chapter 1 Verse 2, I'm going to read verses 2 through, you know, did I finish Hebrews? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I finished Hebrews chapter 6 and got down to faith and patience uh, and not being slothful. So you have to be diligent in, in developing endurance. And so James is teaching us how patience or endurance or perseverance is developed in our lives. Look at verse 2 of James chapter 1. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's, that's, that's incredible. And I'm here to tell you that many believers do not like this verse. Uh, I don't especially like it, but I love the Word of God and I love the power of the Word of God and the surety of God's Word. And how that even when I don't like something after the flesh, I know God's word is good for me. And that God's word is truth. And this said that it's trials, it's these tribulations that is the testing of our faith 
and produces patience. Patience has to be developed. It has to be produced. And how is it produced? With these trials and tribulations and us fighting against them. <clears throat> Verse 4 says, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. It's no accident that he ties wisdom and us asking for wisdom in the midst of trials and tribulations. Because part of the testing of your faith is the temptation to doubt, the temptation to waver, the temptation to question and ask questions, or worse than that, questioning God. There's nothing wrong with asking questions in a trial or a tribulation, but there is something wrong with questioning God. And that's what the test is. Many times in a a heavy trial, a fiery trial, our faith is being tested where we're questioning God's character. We're questioning God's integrity. We're questioning God's faithfulness to us, God's loyalty. And these things are not good, and you have to learn not to do that. And that just comes with experience. And yet in the middle of many of these trials, we need wisdom. Lord, how do I handle this? Lord, what do I need that I'm lacking and that you're endeavoring to get to me in the midst of this trial or this tribulation. And so we need to ask for wisdom. Notice he goes on to say that God gives us wisdom liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. When we ask God for wisdom, how do I handle this situation, Lord? How do I handle this trial? How do I handle myself in this trial? When we ask, God doesn't upbraid us. God doesn't get on to us. Now, he may correct or adjust us in the midst of a trial. I'm not saying he doesn't chasten or, or correct us. I'm saying he, he, doesn't, he doesn't pour wrath out on us. He doesn't rebuke us in any kind of anger or wrath, but rather gives us the wisdom not holding any of our sin or our lack against us. You have to believe that, brothers and sisters. That's part of warring a good warfare, fighting a good fight, learning to stand, learning to overcome, is that God is not going to rebuke you with a negative rebuke or withhold wisdom from you because of your shortcomings, your mistakes, on and on I could go. You have to believe God's unconditional love even in a trial and that he's not withholding wisdom from you. He's not withholding answers from you as you seek him. But look at the qualification in verse 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let, let, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. Boy, that is powerful. We need to embrace that and, and ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our understanding and make sure we understand here what he's saying, that we have to learn to be steadfast in the faith and not tossed to and fro by our feelings, by our circumstances. Boy, I need to say that again. We need to learn not to be double-minded, not to keep going back and forth, because if we do that, if we're double-minded in regards to the promises of God, double-minded in, in regards to the faithfulness and loyalty of God, the character of God, then we'll be unstable in all our ways. Well, that's why this is important that we get steadfast, that we get immovable in our faith. And that even when we ask God for wisdom or for anything else, He gives it. But notice if we keep wavering, we are to think not that we will receive anything of the Lord. Well, that's a big difference in God giving it and us receiving it. God is not withholding any good thing from you. I don't care what you're going through, whether it's in your marriage, your, your children, your careers, church and church culture, your ministries. Many of you are, are leaders in ministry that watch this broadcast. 
And you need to understand how important it is that you get steadfast and immovable in your faith and that you understand the role of patience in this process and even trials and tribulations, that there's a developing that's going on. There's a maturity that's going on. There's a growth process, a learning curve in the kingdom of God that when we, when we waver, we simply need to get steadfast on what we believe and why we believe it. And now, Father, thank you for patience being developed in my life because it's through faith and patience that we inherit the promises of God. Let's go back again and look at verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy when you fall into these trials. You have to count it joy because it doesn't feel joyful when there's a trial, when there's a tribulation, a persecution, an affliction, tribulation, these things that the Word of God promises we'll experience in this life, you don't feel good when there are problems that come your way in your life. There's not a positive emotional response that's ever going to be developed in the hardships of life. Boy, this is something now I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, almost condemned uh, as I'm thinking this out and sharing it. But I really thought for years that my maturity would be that when there's a problem, I feel good about it. I have this joy that I don't have to, by faith, act in. <laughs> this joy that's of my emotions versus the joy of the Lord. See, there's different kinds of joy. There's a joy that's of my emotions based on circumstances and then there's the joy of the Lord that is rooted and based in the faithfulness of God in my life, the promises of God that are sure in my life. And so when there's a trial, my emotions are never going to be positive and giddy and excited about a trial. No, I have to count it all joy. I have to, by faith, understand what's going on and the joy that I count in a trial and a tribulation is the maturing and developing of my faith. I don't like what I'm going through. It doesn't feel good what I'm going through. But what will be produced, I can count it all joy, knowing that I'm going to develop, knowing that my character is going to, to develop in this, in this trial as I submit to God in the trial and resist the devil, I count it all joy that he will flee, that he will flee. So we have to count it, an accounting term, it all joy when we fall into various trials. Well, how do we do that? How, how practically do we, do we do that? Look at verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So two major things right there. Number one, Knowing something versus feeling something. You'll never count it all joy, brothers and sisters, if you don't know what's going on, if you don't have wisdom. If you haven't received wisdom from God on what trials are really all about and how God is still working in the midst of all these trials and afflictions that are just a part of our world. Brothers and sisters, we're in a fallen world. And, and there is death and darkness all around us. And we are going to suffer many things in this life that are not the will of God for us. But it is the will of God that we count it all joy. It is the will of God that in everything we give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So there is a knowing that you have to have, a revelation, an understanding what is really going on here? Why am I going through this trial in my finances? Well, your faith is being tested in regards to your finances, and through faith and patience, you're going to inherit the prosperity that God has promised you. But notice it's through faith and patience. You have to endure a great fight of afflictions. The minute you believe God, brothers and sisters, for anything, the devil begins to war against that seed. He begins to war against your faith. He begins to test and push and try 
your faith and you have to learn to stand. You have to learn to endure. And it's through faith and patience, endurance, that we inherit all of these promises. And notice that it's the trying of your faith that is producing patience in your life. Now, this is, this is something that I was not taught right on and was very confusing for me. I was literally taught that it was my trials and my tribulations, my problems that perfected me or matured me. The word perfect in verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Perfect there doesn't mean like sinless perfection. It means maturity. It means maturity. So I am maturing in the submitting to God and resisting the devil in a problem. The problem is not maturing me. The problem is not intended to mature me. The problem and the source of the problem is Satan. He's the one, John 10, 10, that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And his purpose is to discourage me, disappoint me, get me to back up, back out, back off of my faith so that this maturing process does not take place. And again, it's not the problem and trials and tribulations that are perfecting us, or brothers and sisters, we'd all be perfect. <laughs> Everyone watching me right now would be absolutely perfect if problems perfected us because all of us have problems equally. Think about that for a minute. It's not your problems that perfect you, and they're not designed by Satan to perfect you. They're designed by Satan to, to discourage you, to get you to give up, give in, and give out on regards and in regards to your faith. And so while God doesn't design them and while God doesn't send them, God uses them and encourages us in them to submit to him the promises and resist the devil, and he'll flee. And it's in the resisting, the submitting and the resisting that you develop, develop your spiritual muscles. You know, weights are a good example. Uh, years ago, I was, I was uh, murmuring and complaining uh, about my size, and a friend suggested weights and said, you can do something about that. Get you a set of weights, and, and they will help bulk you up and... Develop your muscles. And I bought a set of weights, brothers and sisters, and I watched those weights for over a year. And those weights did not do a thing for me. <laughs> How many of you know it's not the weights that build muscle tone? It's not the weights that build you up. It's, it's resisting the weights. It's yielding to the weights and then resisting the weights. It's exercising yourself with the weights that develops muscle tone and a better body structure, if you will, but not the weights. Trials and tribulations do not perfect us. They are like weights that we have to submit to God in faith, resist the devil in the trial, and through faith and patience, endurance, like lifting weights, you have to endure for at least 20 to 30 minutes. You have to endure and you have to submit, resist, submit, resist. Think about that picture. You're submitting and resisting. Well, how does that work in trials and tribulations? You're submitting to God, resisting the devil, and then he flees. And guess what? In that process, you develop your spiritual muscles. You develop maturity. Man, that is powerful. I hope this is encouraging you. I hope this is helping. That You need to learn to count it all joy. You need to learn to submit to God and, and, and faith in God, resist the devil, and then he flees and you grow. See, God doesn't just want you to go through trials. We need to go through them, yes, but God wants us to grow through them. Not just go through them, but grow 
through them. And that comes from fighting the good fight of faith. Well, we'll continue looking at this and diving into this in my next broadcast. Thank you so much for being a part. We have messages that you can download absolutely free. Some, on, some are on audio file. Others are video files on how faith works and cooperative powers with faith where you can hear these messages as I taught them in other forums. So you can, you can get a hold of those at our website. That's PastorDwayne.com, PastorDwayne, D-U-A-N-E.com. And that'll take you to our website. That'll take you to a search engine. You can also get all of my books. There's a tab that you can click on in regards to our store and things that we have available. We also, again, offer CDs absolutely available for free. And we have many on this, this series I'm teaching on, so you can browse the website and the catalog there. You can also call us at area code 580-580-580. 580-4040-DSM. That's area code 580-4040-376. And we have prayer partners available to agree with you in prayer, to encourage you in any fight of faith that you're fighting. We'd sure love to hear from you. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast. God bless you. We want to take a moment to say thank you to our Impact Partners for your generosity. It's because of your financial partnership that we're able to continue giving away Duane's teachings completely free. You enable us to reach millions of people and share the grace and truth of Jesus around the world. If you're not already an Impact Partner, we ask that you prayerfully consider becoming one today. To do this, visit our website to access all of our free teachings that we know will be a blessing to you. You can also become a partner by calling the number on the screen. Again, we're so incredibly grateful for our impact partners. It's because of you that we're able to fulfill our mission to help people grow in Christ. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.